porn is not just sexual. That term actually relates to torture. I felt that I got discriminated against in fashion also for not being gay. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, f you. Everybody know. I think the thing that everybody is having a hard time grasping is how that whole thing could have probably went down but the thing is is it was how fast he disappeared and you know after have working for him you know puff you think he'd have master everything this is for them underground motherfuckers that like it real real dirty and like it hard pause <laughs> that was a crazy one what am i what am i doing he said something to me one time a long time ago a at chris lighty's wedding he told me are you a cheater no i used to be a cheater i'm not a cheater no more Used to be. I'm a, I'm a truth teller now. You're an honest man. Diddy, you gave me the Ooshkosh Gooshwash. You gave me the Ooshkosh Muaf. The Shooshwash. Diddy. If I can make a man suck my dick, I can make people do anything for money. That's what you said, Puff. Hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deny. Take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts. What if I told you that behind the glittering facade of fame, there's a tale of unexpected alliances, secret escapades, and a celebrity rescue mission? Well, buckle up! because Kanye West is about to spill the tea on a clandestine operation involving none other than Diddy's right-hand man, Fonsworth Bentley. This is not your typical Hollywood story. It's a journey into the uncharted territories of fame's underbelly. Since the era of exposing Diddy began, fans have been curious about the fate of Diddy's former assistant, Fonsworth Bentley. Recent reports suggest that Bentley had to make a swift exit from Diddy's circle, similar to Cassie. Allegedly, it was Kanye West who assisted Bentley in leaving. Fonsworth Bentley rose to media prominence in the early 2000s as Diddy's personal assistant. <sighs> Bentley? Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah, no, 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 need it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> However, according to claims by Jaguar Wright, Bentley wasn't merely an assistant, but rather Diddy's concubine. The question arises, what was the real nature of the relationship between Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley? Cassie, in her lawsuit, mentioned that Diddy had an assistant who played a role in arranging certain encounters. Speculation has now arisen about whether this assistant was Fonsworth Bentley. On the flip side, some sources suggest that Bentley may have been a victim as well, alleging that Diddy treated him poorly, akin to a slave. The mystery surrounding Fonsworth Bentley's departure and the potential complexities of his relationship with Diddy raise questions. Could Bentley be the next step forward with a lawsuit against Diddy? Let's dive into the intricacies of this unfolding situation. I said it's Derek Watkins, the suit master. For those unfamiliar with Fonsworth Bentley, let's rewind a bit. Fonsworth Bentley, whose real name is Derek Watkins, stepped into the limelight during Diddy's transformation from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy. Diddy, known for some controversial incidents in the late 90s, was rebranding himself as a refined and classy rapper in the early 2000s. And leading this transformation was none other than Fonsworth Bentley. The stylish individual always seemed close to Diddy, holding a big umbrella. Derek Watkins made his initial appearance on the Atlanta celebrity scene in the early 2000s, gaining mainstream recognition around 2004 to 2005 as Diddy's stylist assistant. According to claims by Jaguar Wright, Bentley was more than just an assistant. He was Diddy's concubine. However, this aspect of Bentley's life remained largely unknown to the public. Fonsworth Bentley had more to his name than being Diddy's style consultant. In 2002, he featured on DeBrat's album, Too Hot for TV, and contributed to Outkast's Speaker Box slash The Love Below album in 2003. He even made a cameo appearance in Kanye West's music video for The New Workout Plan in 2004. Cause she wasn't just hiring it for her. Don't get that effed up, Art. If you think that she was just hiring those male prostitutes 
for herself. Beyond that, Bentley worked extensively with Kanye West, being credited as a songwriter and producer on various tracks, including On Sight, Black Skin Head, I Am A God, Hold My Liquor, and Ultralight Beam. Outside the music studios, Fonsworth Bentley showcased his versatility by playing the violin in the Yes We Can music video, supporting Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. Despite these accomplishments, Bentley is often remembered solely as Diddy's assistant and valet. Diddy faced legal troubles in 2001, including gun possession and bribery charges linked to a 1991 nightclub shooting. Shortly after, he underwent a rebranding process, transforming into the new man that the public began to recognize. Out of all the individuals closely associated with Diddy over the years, Fonsworth Bentley likely holds some of the most extraordinary stories. Spending years in close proximity to Diddy, Bentley witnessed pivotal moments, including those involving Kim Porter and Cassie. At the time, many perceived Diddy's choice to have an assistant follow him around with an umbrella as eccentricity. However, according to Jaguar Wright, this seemingly peculiar act might have been part of a more intricate ritual a master concubine relationship between Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley. Everybody know. I think the thing that everybody is having a hard time grasping is how that whole thing could have probably went down. But the thing is, is it was how fast he disappeared. Fonsworth Bentley shared that he crossed paths with Diddy after relocating from Atlanta to New York and engaging in networking efforts. The initial encounter took place in a club where Bentley approached Diddy, despite initially being ignored. Following this, they exchanged numbers, and Bentley took the initiative to text Diddy, essentially pleading for a job opportunity. You know, I just picked up the page. You remember the guy that traveled from Howard University to intern with Andre Harrell? I'm that guy in 2001. Please don't make me go back to work on Monday uh, at the restaurant. He replied, come to 1396 Third Avenue. I literally started that day training as his assistant. The rest is history. After Diddy hired him, Fonsworth appeared on Diddy's MTV show. After Diddy hired him, Fonsworth Bentley made appearances on Diddy's MTV show, Making the Band. As he became more visible through the show, the nature of their arrangement started to make people increasingly uneasy. Unfortunately, it's challenging to locate all episodes of Making the Band today, with MTV refusing to air reruns for some undisclosed reason. Nevertheless, snippets and clips of Fonsworth's time on the show, such as moments like Diddy threatening him over the phone, can still be found. I went to sleep they, when I woke up. It, the whole house was clean, just like I asked for it to be. But I got a note right here from Babs. She broke out and went to Brooklyn. It's taking you entirely too long to tell the story. This is your problem, man. Good luck to you. Um, uh -huh. and when I get there, everything better be on point. Fans who are old enough to recall the initial airing of Making the Band have expressed memories of witnessing Diddy mistreating Fonsworth Bentley on camera. The public perception of their relationship was further shaped by Diddy's actions displayed on the show. Additionally, Fonsworth Bentley revealed to Angela Yee that Diddy was providing him with meager wages for his role, shedding light on the financial aspect of their working relationship. I was making really good money in the restaurant uh, business. That actually. good though? That's a oh, like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, Shit. that's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah that is pretty for New good. York. Yeah, and back then too. it's ninety-eight. Like that's a lot of money. Wow, that is stayed. We're like yeah, ninety hundred. Like I was doing well. So you know, and Diddy wasn't uh, paying that much. Yeah, no way at all. <laughs> Diddy's bodyguard Gene Deal has recently expressed his belief that Cassie's lawsuit underwent redaction to eliminate sections detailing Diddy's direct involvement in these alleged freak-off events. Meanwhile, another interview with Gene surfaced, wherein he claimed to be privy to all the details of Fonsworth Bentley's business. These statements raise intriguing questions about the extent of Diddy's engagement in the events mentioned in Cassie's lawsuit and the potentially intricate nature of Fonsworth Bentley's association with Diddy. Fonsworth actually is down here in Atlanta. He's married with like two kids. He just lives a quiet life now. But yeah. yeah, he should. Yeah. He should. He ain't say nothing about me either. Cause he know I know his business. You know his business business. I know his business business.
Jean recently disclosed a startling claim that Diddy purportedly broke the nose of ex-Kim Porter on a yacht. The alleged incident occurred when Porter reportedly discovered Diddy in a compromising situation with another man. Same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something when she, to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. An article from August 2005 recounts an incident where Kim Porter allegedly suffered a broken nose during an argument with Diddy on Combs's yacht in Saint Tropez. Considering that, at the time, Fonsworth Bentley was still serving as Diddy's assistant, and given Diddy's frequent trips to Saint Tropez with Bentley, speculation has arisen that Kim may have discovered Diddy involved in a compromising situation with Bentley. Interestingly, around this period, Fonsworth Bentley began making strides in the music industry, with Kanye West providing him a significant opportunity. The convergence of these events adds a layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. As Fonsworth Bentley sought independence and ventured into the music industry, rumors circulated that Diddy, unable to tolerate his growing autonomy, allegedly hindered Bentley's career by blackballing him from the industry. However, reports suggest that Kanye West played a pivotal role in aiding Bentley's departure from Diddy's influence. While Kanye may not have been aware of the full extent of the situation, sources close to the matter indicate that he harbored discomfort with Diddy's public treatment of Bentley. After liberating himself from Diddy's sphere and purportedly facing blacklisting, Bentley returned to Atlanta, married Fawn Chambers, and became a father to two children. Yet, according to Jaguar Wright, there's a significant reason why Fonsworth chose to reside in Atlanta. Now he lives in Atlanta, he's married, he has two sons, he's living, yeah. he's living his life. I mean, but how many? Listen, y'all, if you've ever lived in Atlanta, you know the majority, uh, The ma okay, the majority yeah. of them are bisexual and gay men. Yeah. They just give and up their life to be married and gave their life to God and then your pastor. And download culture is still very, very, very heavy in the black community um, in Atlanta. It's funny because Atlanta is like a gay mecca. You would think that there would be no need for download culture, but download culture is thriving in Atlanta still. Fans are now expressing a growing belief that there was something unsettling about the relationship between Diddy and Fonsworth. They are eagerly anticipating Fonsworth's possible revelation of the details regarding what Diddy may have put him through. Someone said, y'all remember Fonsworth started hanging with Kanye and that's when Fonsworth started doing his own thing? And somebody asked Diddy about him and he did the same wish you well speech he did for Cassie? Diddy never even wanted his own artists or employees to shine. Another person wrote, I always thought it was weird a grown man following another grown man with an umbrella and wiping his face. How do you perceive the entire Fonsworth Bentley situation? Do you believe he will eventually open up about his past experiences with Diddy? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to explore the next story.